The European Union has proposed banning the sale of new combustion engines by 2035. Now, that's the market that receives most of South Africa's vehicles exports, right? So this will have massive implications for the local industry. In fact, with other markets gearing up to grab market share from South Africa, we have additional issues to deal with. If ESCOM cannot keep the lights on, how will we be able to charge our vehicles? A new report has looked into exactly that. Uh, it's called The Shape of the Electric Vehicle Revolution in South Africa and the Possible Impact Thereof on the ESCOM Grid. Joining us now is researcher and author of the report, Elsa Marie Leroux. Very important questions that you are raising um, in this report, Elsa. Let's talk about that. These are very important questions. How will we be able to charge our vehicles um, if we don't have any power? Good afternoon, and thank you for having me. Well, isn't that always the first joke that is the African crack when we tell them, you know, electric vehicles are coming to South Africa, whether we like it or not, you know, as well, ESCOM can barely keep the lights on as it is. How is this going to work? So what we did was we worked with ESCOM. They've got a great electric vehicle department, and we took their projections of what the electric vehicle market might look like over the next 20 to 30 years, and we overlapped that data with our integrated resources plan, which was published back in 2019, arguably with some flawed assumptions looking back now, but that was the best roadmap that we had to work with. And the good news is, is that South Africa or ESCOM will generate sufficient electricity to support even the highest penetration market, which it, uh, it stated at, uh, that they expected to be around 2.9 million EV vehicles by 2040. That is if the charging generation is spread evenly throughout a 24-hour period. Now, we know that is not human nature, okay? So that bring, uh, brings a new conundrum to ESCOM because what they don't want is everyone coming home after work at 5 o'clock, switching on the geezer, the stove, the washing machine, and then plugging in as well because our infrastructure won't be able to handle that. So along with ESCOM having to deal with the energy crisis that it currently has on its plate, it will have to start looking at a charging strategy and how they're going to incentivize EV owners to charge during off-peak hours, be it now in the middle of the night or four o'clock in the morning, because we cannot add to our peak hour demand. So yes, we will have sufficient electricity generation. It's just getting people to not plug in all at the same time. Elsa. Elsa, obviously right now, the appetite for EVs in South Africa is seemingly not that great uh, because of, number one, the cost of these EVs, and they are considered high-end vehicles, so therefore high-end brands are at the moment, at least in the current climate, producing these electric cars. What then when the production value of the EVs become more available and accessible and it does become a widely um, available product? W what does that picture look like in terms of your research? What did you find? So really to that is a two-pronged answer. On the one side, you have the state currently imposing severe taxes on the imports of EVs. They have the the standard custom import duties on them, but they also have an ad valorem tax, which is basically a luxury wealth tax. And that gets added because of the minerals uh, contained within the battery and amounts to about 42 to 45% of an EV price, which is almost half of the price. It's a lot. And you compare that to the combustion engine car that we import, it comes down to about 18%. Then there's another side to the coin, and that is the World uh, Economic Forum actually found that while the price of batteries, which is arguably the thing that makes the car expensive, actually reduced by 80% over the past 10 years. But over that exact same period, the price of EVs went up. And the reason for that is because the EV developers and manufacturers chose to rather deliver and focus and develop on high-end luxury vehicles as opposed to entry level. So both attitudes will have to change, right? The state will have to look at incentivizing or, or at least bringing down or scrapping some of the taxes. And then we will also start seeing manufacturers, which will happen over time, uh, manufacturing more affordable vehicles as entry-level EV vehicles, as opposed to just the very high-end luxury EV vehicles that we're currently seeing. 
And obviously, last night, uh, Elsa, I don't know if you managed to catch the interview with Marcel Gordon uh, speaking to BMW CEO Peter van Binsberg. Uh, he, they, and they were basically saying they are investing significantly to make electric cars available at the Roslyn plant. Let's listen in. We okay. will be the only location building the hybrid for the world. So all markets who sell the hybrid will get it from South Africa. I think that's a, a great honor that the Roslyn plant has been chosen to supply the worldwide demand for the X3 hybrid as of next year. Um, and it is possible that we offer it in South Africa and we're working on that right now. So it's, um, it's not excluded from South Africa and we have a, a clear plan to increase the number of hybrids available in South Africa and the X3 okay. should be one of them. It's a growing market, let me put it that way. We already offer EVs right from the smallest um, SUV, so the X1, right up until the 7 Series uh, limousine. So we have an iX1, we have an i4, we have an iX3, we have an iX and an i7. So we're already very much into NEVs and EVs here in South Africa, and they are selling, and they're selling well, but it's still a, it's still a, big, a market that's beginning to grow. But there are customers here who, who see the benefits of EVs, and they're very often the early adopters who have already gone fully solar at home and so on. And so the EV is just the next step into their renewables lifestyle. And of course, the smallest product that he's referring to right now, currently fetching anywhere between and just a little over a million rand. How would you respond to that, Elsa, in as far as your research is concerned? This brand making con a concerted effort to now invest in EVs being produced in the country for the country, but also for the export market. Well, you know, it's great news. It's great news that we're seeing the private manufacturers really stepping up, but you know, they, they don't really have much of a choice because as you said in the intro, three out of every four vehicles that South Africa, that South Africa exports goes to the EU, right? And they are pr proposing that the legislation must change they won't sell any new combustion engines from 2035. So the, this is really the manufacturers trying to stay ahead of the curve uh, as it, uh, with regards to policy developments. That's not going to only happen in the EU, but we'll see the changes coming in from the US and where, wherever else we want to export um, our, our vehicles to. So this is fantastic news. What is really important is that while it is great that we are looking after the, the manufacturing industry that we have right now, the EV transition that's happening but holds a, a great opportunity for South Africa to also attract foreign direct investment, new investment, if we can make it easier for these companies to South Africa. Because as you also pointed out in the intro, there are a couple of countries, including Egypt and Morocco, that's standing in the wings and, and they are prepared to take over our market share if we do not get our ducks in a row. The other part that's really important that we shouldn't forget is that what, what's also important is that we need to see the skills transfer happening as well. Because uh, a Green Cap report also pointed out that South Africa, we simply don't have sufficient skills to drive this new technology in South Africa, right? So we need to see upskillment, skills development, and we see the private manufacturers even coming into that. There's a private manufacturer in South Africa, for example, that's looking into engineering students and ensuring that they are upskilled enough and sufficiently so to really drive this technology in South Africa. So kudos to BMW for, 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 for uh, making South Africa the hub for the BMW X3, but also it is what's going to start happening everywhere, all the manufacturing plants in South Africa as the legislation starts pushing them in that direction. And of course, before I let you go, Elsa, let's talk about then the consumer, uh, the people who actually buy these products. What should they consider right now? And I know, I imagine you've gone into detail in the shape of the electric vehicle revolution in South Africa. But as a buyer, what should I be thinking about when considering an EV? Well, the things to consider right now is, I think, for most of us, and the, and the, I would say, 40, 45 and under and younger, um, we, are, we are most likely to drive an EV within our lifetime, right? And this, and this can change our whole landscape. I mean, for, there's, so, there's a myriad of things that, that's going to change and needs to look differently and, and obstacles that we might face, but there are things that we don't even think about. I mean, what is a fuel station going to look like, for example, if everyone charges at home? So, you know, there, there are these things that we need to think about, but... As far as EV right now, it's still going to take a while for the working class, like you and myself, maybe, before we can afford it. But 
start wrapping your head around it. Start, start accepting the fact that, you know, we're going to drive on roads one day, perhaps 50%, 40 to 50% filled with EVs. Elsa Marie LaRue, thank you so much for your time. And of course, you can read up on this report. Uh, it's called The Shape of the Electric Vehicle Revolution in South Africa and the Possible Impact Thereof on the Eskom Grid.